Hi, this is Jeff Hillen from HPE with another Redfish School video. This one is on events and messages. A quick agenda, I'm going to go over uh, the resources uh, that are involved in events, what the uh, eventing model map looks like, some examples, and then how a client actually forms a message from all of these objects. So the resources involved in eventing are uh, uh, just a few. Uh, first, there's the event service itself that, that represents, you know, the the status and retry information and event types for subscription that a client can uh, subscribe to. It's the service itself. It's also got a collection of subscriptions and you need that URI because that's where you do a post to um, when you're trying to subscribe to events. Um, of course, there's the event subscription object and that's the format you post to that collection that contains the URL of the destination for the events. Um, as well as the type of events and, and user-supplied context um, that, that you want sent in every event. And then there's the events themselves uh, that are sent to that URL. Um, we'll go over what those look like. Um, they don't really exist in the mockups, uh, but it's because they don't really exist in a service. You know, the uh, Redfish service, when you look at the mockups, contain things that you can do a get on. Well, you can't do a get on an event because that's sent the other way. Um, on the URL that was the destination for the subscription. Um, and then there's message registries. Uh, that's really a, just a big array of messages and their attributes organized by message ID. Typically what you get in an event is a message ID and some substitution variables. And then you look that message ID up in a message registry and from that you pull out the message. So it's a, it's a, a mechanism that we use for um, lightweight uh, uh, information to be sent and uh, um, stored in the Redfish service and any of its providers, and then the, uh, all the heavyweight text and all that can be in the registry, and the client can just look it up. That allows localization and translation, um, as well as a lightweight implementation on the Redfish service side. So here's what the event uh, service model looks like. You know, right off the service route, you've got an event service with a subscriptions collection, and it can have one or more subscriptions in it. And when you're done with your event, you delete that subscription. Or when you're done with that eventing service, uh, uh, listening, you don't want to listen anymore and receive any more events, you delete that subscription. Um, there's also a collection of registries right off the service route, and those have a message registry file in them that then point to message registries. And then there are events themselves. They don't really hang off the service route because they're heading the other direction to the client. Um, they get posted by the service to their URL that's in the event subscription. So here's what an event service uh, might look like. Um, the, the, it's got the normal... Oh, data context type, ID, name, status that you see on all redfish objects. Um, the important factors in here that you're looking at is retry. We've got a retry attempts number three, and I'll try uh, the service here. We'll try it every 60 seconds three times if they fail. Um, of course, the event types that you could subscribe to um, are all listed there, and then the subscriptions collection itself, that's the URI that you would do the post to of the event destination. So let's look at that real quick. Event destination, um, you know, uh, uh, right here, this one is subscribing to messages that are only of a specific type. In this case, it's it's a fictitious event. Don't go looking for a, something called DMTF alert. It doesn't exist. But if it did, it would be the 1.0 version of it and a link disconnect message specifically looking for that message for this subscription. Um, the destination for the URI. So this is where the service would send the event uh, with a post. Um, you're only subs this one is only subscribing to event types of alert. There's a context uh, that user supplied. So you'll get that back with the events. This is so that if you've got a single service and you've got like multiple uh, event destination, event sources, you can supply a context so that it gets handled correctly on the client side. And then this one is using the Redfish protocol um, for selection. Um, and then origin resources allows um, selection of specific sources of events. Again, both origin of, of resources and messages are optional in implementation, so not every one of them will uh, allow that in a subscription. The events themselves are, um, these are, this is the traffic that's heading back to that subscription. It's got the same kind of OData type ID stuff at the beginning that you would expect. 
Um, it's also got that context that was supplied in the uh, original subscription. And then it's got an events array. So you might have more than one event in this array and, and uh, that optimizes traffic. Um, this particular one, you, the, the subscriptions uh, subscribe to events of type alert. This one is, if you have more than one type, it'll tell you the event type. It'll also tell you an event ID that's really kind of meant for grouping and correlation. Um, severity and message, these are in the message registry. And there are some implementations that will send a message in a severity, particularly if they're trying to override the message registry, either message or, or severity when you do the lookup, um, but most implementations aren't going to send those. Instead, they're going to send just the message ID, and then you use that ID to look it up in the registry. The message args are arguments for substitution in the messages. You'll, you'll, uh, I'll go through an example of that in a minute. And then origin of condition is the URI of the resource in the Redfish model that caused the message. So here's an example of a message registry. This is a, a, a phony message registry. There are a few of them out there that are at the DMTF website and you can go look them up. Um, but this is just an example. So here, this is a message registry prefix called alert and the version is 100. So you know you found the alert 100 message registry when you find this in it. And then it's got this um, object big, big set of messages. Um, this particular one is the message ID of LAN disconnect. And then you notice the message in there has a percent one and a percent two in it. And it's also got the severity in it. So when the substitution variables come back, percent one is the first one, percent two is the second one. And that's how you'd build the message. And then of course it says number of args two, so that you know exactly how many args are supposed to be in that uh, message. And then uh, and a, a possible resolution that you could display to a user on how to resolve the issue that prompted this message. So how a client finds the message in a registry and forms a message. First, is there a message in the event? If so, you need to go to the registry and find one. Um, use the message ID to find the registry version and message. In the event in the example, it had a message ID of alert 10 land disconnect. So the first segment before the first period is a registry name alert. The second two segments between that second and third period are the version 1.0. And that last segment is the message identifier in the registry. And you use that information to find the registry and the message in it. The service route has a link to the message registry collection. You find the member in the collection that has the registry prefix matching that first segment alert. You find a version that matches the second and third segments, 1.0. And then you find the element in the messages of the registry that matches the, in the message registry array that matches that last segment. Any DMTF registries are published at H, uh, hdbredfish.dmtf.org slash registries. Um, but it's possible that there are OEM and vendor registries out there. So once you found the registry and you found the message in it, then you populate the message for the end user. You take a message property in that registry entry and you start substituting the message args from the event itself. Replace the percent one in the message with the first arg, percent two, and, and keep following that uh, pattern until all the args have been substituted. So here's an example. I've removed all the other properties in the event and in the registry just to make this ex example easier to follow. Um, there's that, that first segment, alert, and I found a message registry prefix of alert. Here's a version 1.0 um, in that message ID. I go and find the message registry version that's got 1.0 in it. There, this is the one I found. And then I look for the LAN disconnect message. There, I found this LAN disconnect message. I then grab the message. This one's in English, but it could be in any language. I then grab the message and start substituting variables. So. Here's the constructed message for a user. I grab that message out of here. Land disconnect on percent one was detected on percent two. I start, uh, uh, um, grab that message. I then grab ethernet interface one from the first message arg and put it in percent one. I grab redfish v1 systems one and put it in, in percent two. And so when I display the message to the user after the string substitution, I get the message a LAN disconnect on ethernet interface one was detected on system redfish v1 systems one. That's all there is to eventing. Um, thank you for watching.